What's up, everybody? Welcome to a director's commentary behind the scenes look for my latest short film titled Three, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Futility. Shooting the film took us about uh, four days. Uh, I started shooting it back in June of 2014. Uh, the first day I shot uh, what was basically the first half of the film in Manhattan Beach, California. We were running around the streets and alleyways of Manhattan Beach, so that was a lot of fun, kind of guerrilla style. The second day of shooting was at ATB Studios in Burbank, California. We had about four or five hours on a Saturday morning uh, to shoot what was essentially the entire second half of the film where most of the dialogue takes place. Third day was at the end of the movie where Max's character uh, wakes up and is in his apartment. Fourth day was when I kind of I got on a green screen and shot the newscaster segment, so that was a lot of fun. Um, after the entire thing was finished, I spent a couple of days editing the film uh, together. The first cut I ended up with was like 10, maybe like 10 minutes long. It was a little bit longer than I like, had anticipated originally. So I wanted to revisit that later. So I, I just went ahead and dove into the visual effects I ended up spending a lot of time like Rotoscoping these characters like frame by frame like in all their separate little sections in order to get You know the, a separation between the background and the foreground and I took a hiatus for a little while You know went back and finished it I think over I have no idea how long it took but I would say easily I spent maybe a hundred hours working on the visual effects alone Working on this film was a big challenge in a lot of ways. And this one was a little bit different than some of my other short films. Like most of my other things that I've done, I spent a lot of time with cinematography, the setting up lights and trying to compose every shot. Uh, meanwhile, this one I decided to do a little bit differently. I didn't light anything. I, I shot the entire film with what was available, natural lighting, and uh, tried to make the most of what was there and focus more of my intentions on camera movements, you know, and um, the structure of the scene and trying to uh, tell somewhat of a story without dialogue um, you know and with, with music of course but uh, what's not being said versus like what's actually being said so I'm really excited to share this film with you today it was a really big step forward for me and I hope that you enjoy it I originally got the idea for this film um, because I kept seeing like a prescription um, a pill bottle like laying in the hallway uh, just like right outside of uh, my bathroom and I went out to Amazon and uh, I found out you could buy like 300 pill bottles uh, for like 30 bucks and I was like hey that'd be a really cool prop. So this is uh, Manhattan Beach, California, a little alleyway in between uh, the Vons and uh, I parking area, some residential area. Um, it was kind of interesting when we were shooting out here, literally the day that we chose to do this, there was somebody like just around the corner cutting tile <laughs> for like remodeling their house. And if you know what that sounds like, that is like one of the loudest things ever. So I did a little bit of folly, you know, the door closing and the, you know, the, uh, the people walking, a little bit of folly. So clock in the background over there, it says 402. Um, interesting story about that. Um, one of the first jobs I ever had um, when I was a kid, I worked at a Hollywood video. And the price for a uh, like a five day movie rental uh, new release was like $3.99 plus tax in Pennsylvania ended up being like $4.02. So uh, 402 was kind of like, uh, you know, the, uh, the trick uh, was like, the number, you know, they, and we kept showing up everywhere. It was like some kind of cons conspiracy. So this was a lot of fun designing these UIs. Oh, right here where it says iPhone, she's actually like checking, you know, the uh, Horizon Mobile, uh, checking her, her uh, statement. But uh, I wrote like iPhone like 46 and because uh, it's supposed to take place in the future or something, but... It was kind of uh, kind of too far fetched. So 4:32. Uh, that's kind of interesting too. Um, after I you know stopped working at Hollywood Video many years ago, um, I ended up picking up a job when I moved to Los Angeles working for Blockbuster Video. And the taxes are a little bit different in um, California than they are in Pennsylvania. So a five day movie rental uh, in ca in California, you know, 3.99 plus tax was like four dollars and thirty two cents. So. That was kind of the thing. Uh, I chose those numbers because they're kind of like historically significant to uh, to somebody like me. Uh, but uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun thinking about it uh, because you know, I came from, come, come from like a movie rental, you know, <laughs> part time job. And of course, you know, the significance has a lot to do with you know the passage of time after she takes the drugs. So 30 minutes passed and she didn't, it was kind of like loss of time, which is what uh, the newscaster character was talking about earlier. So here we go with, uh, you know, the, the chase scene through Manhattan Beach. It was a lot of fun uh, to shoot. 
uh, kind of crazy and everything. Um, I purposefully shot handheld and, uh, you know, did did some of this, like, uh, panning and whipping around uh, in order to get, you know, that, like, sense of urgency and, and everything. And, of course, the music is supposed to kind of pump that up. Look in the background, you can see a beware of dog sign. I thought that was hilarious. I specifically cut that in because I really liked it. That's my little quip. So, uh, you can see people down at the bottom there are kind of staring at us, like, what are you doing running around with a camera in Manhattan Beach? But... I mean, hey, it's Los Angeles, man. People be shooting everywhere. This is a little boardwalk kind of bridge uh, on the beach right there. And uh, I think we got pretty lucky, you know, that the beach wasn't super busy and, you know, nobody was really bothering us, but uh, it was a lot of fun to, to shoot out that way. So this is a really great example of... Um, you know, like uh, equalizing the color grade when it comes to like shooting an outside scene like this. Uh, you know, these shots are a lot different in the way that uh, they're they're lit because shooting into the shadows is different than, you know, shooting out into the light. And so a lot of effort had to be made in order to uh, colorize these shots and uh, get them all to look the same. Of course, there we go. I got some extras in my movie. Yeah, I got free extras. I didn't have to pay them or nothing. There's some extras over there too. <laughs> So there's an example of the visual effects where I had to like cut them out frame by frame and uh, you know get them to disappear from that background. Uh, the background of, of uh, behind her is actually a still. I actually like took a still image of that underground area or not under the uh, the boardwalk. So here's ATB Studios. Um, I really loved uh, shooting here. They have a beautiful establishment and uh, you know it's it's a full fledged studio. So you can, you can shoot in there, you don't need a uh, permit or nothing like that. You can construct and do all kinds of crazy things. Um, it turns out I was talking to the guy that, uh, that led us in there and he was, uh, it's owned by a family. And uh, it used to be like a book binding factory. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, after the, uh, the book binding factory went out of business, they decided to kind of like, you know, they still owned the, the warehouse, so uh, they, uh, they went ahead and, uh, they went ahead and uh, turned it into like a, a movie studio. A shooting studio, so you can shoot in there. So when I was shooting here in this in this warehouse, I was kind of pushing it in terms of the available lighting. There wasn't a lot, um, and I was trying to shoot in just the right way where we use those overhead lights to kind of get like some kind of a backlight and at least some type of a fill from the other side. There was like one skylight that the sun kept coming in and out of. Um, it was really interesting uh, to shoot in here though because. Um, I went ahead and tested out uh, the, uh, the the plugins I've got for uh, noise reduction. I was shooting maybe like 1,200 ISO for for this entire scene, like uh, in order to get uh, in order to get um, you know like some available light. Um, like here's a good example. Um, before uh, I, I went ahead and applied the color grade and cleaned the footage and everything, I and this is what the footage looked like. Uh, when it was it was pretty dark and you can't really see any detail uh, at some of those areas. After I cleaned the footage and applied a color grade, I was able to brighten it up and uh, see a lot of the detail uh, that came back, you know, from brightening it up. So I got pretty lucky in uh, the method in which it chose to, uh, you know, to, to restore some of that dark areas. But uh, uh, the Panasonic GH3 I was shooting on has. Uh, a 72 megabit all intra encoding, uh, which was really great, lots of information. It doesn't have super high dynamic range, but it was really good for shooting in a dark scene, and I think it turned out really well. Really hurting, sexually frustrated, crippling debt. Pick your poison. Would you do nothing? What happens when they wake up and realize they've missed their child's first step? They're taking a magimethalin. They didn't want that kid in the first So, of course, um, after the entire cut was finished, I applied like a film grain look to it uh, in order to kind of give it some kind of life in the background because after you, you know, denoise the footage, it, uh, it gets a little, you know, flat and kind of want to get some life back into it. She thinks she's helping these people. These pills are like little white lines. It's pretty cool. Um, I spent a bunch of time like designing the, uh, the pill bottle, like when he holds up that pill bottle. Um, it was kind of funny. I, I made these like prescription labels and uh, took them to, uh, you know, to like Office Max and got them like printed. And the girl behind the counter was like kind of looking at me funny. She's like, why is this guy like printing like 
you know, a hundred like uh, prescription pill bottle labels is kind of funny. But she asked me, she goes, so what exactly is that? Are you like doing something with is that? And I told her, I was like, oh, it's actually a movie prop, you know? And she's like, oh, that's cool, you know? And I was sitting there talking to her about it. So here's an example of that rotoscope shot and the entire background in order for that to disappear, had to cut them out frame by frame. It was a lot of work, but you know, it, it was worth it in, in the long run because I got, you know, got like real precise cut between him and the background. And of course, he's the one that ends up being the one under the influence of the drugs. And yeah, so there it is, uh, three. Spent a lot of time, you know, preparing and shooting and, you know, we had a lot of fun doing it. And I think, you know, I was able to accomplish, you know, a, a, like exactly what I was looking for when it came to shooting this movie. And, you know, it was a lot of work, but uh, I'm really happy with it. Okay, well, thanks for watching. If you want to go ahead and uh, subscribe for more cool short films, and of course, uh, check out my other stuff. I've got SoundCloud channel if you want to hear some of my music. And follow me on Instagram and stuff. I'm always posting cool pictures. Otherwise, I will catch you later.